I was going to take a wee look at the starters used on a Gardner engine. Now they come in two sizes. This is the five inch. And that is the six inch, and you can of course get them in both twenty four volts and twelve volts. But the twelve volt is is more more rare. I'm getting more difficult to get. Now you'll also find very occasionally on marine engines you'll find these air starters, but they're getting really quite difficult to source now. Although we do have a supplier. Um, they use air starters on boats because of the associated, they're trying to reduce electric circuits so they just use air and they're not reliant on, on uh, batteries then, no problem with batteries. Okay, um, the 5 inch starter normally has a 12 tooth pinion, the 6 inch is a 13 tooth pinion. The pinions will come in either brass or steel, but obviously the brass pinion uh, is very, very good wearing, but also reduces the wear on the, the ring gear. Um, okay, how do they work? Uh, quite, quite, quite subtle. I'm going to assume that you all know how an electric motor works. Essentially, we've got uh, windings here in the stator around the inside of the cylinder here. We've got windings on the rotor which rotates here. Electric current passes both both sets of windings. With every electric current you've got an associated uh, magnetic field. So you have two magnetic fields, you have two magnets. Magnets will either repel or attract each other so therefore you can generate rotation in that way. Um, so what happens is whenever you um, press your start button on your engine, these two points here, that positive terminal and that terminal become, uh, that circuit becomes closed. Now, whenever that circuit becomes closed, two things happen. There's an auxiliary winding inside here in the start -up. And once it's energized, it causes the whole rotor to come out, to move forward, okay? I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. So the whole mechanism of the rotor moves out once that auxiliary winding is energized. At the same time, this coil here is energized. You'll see that now shortly. It pulls in this armature here and it causes electric current to flow down through this circuit, down through that copper plate there and into the main windings on the starter. So whenever the rotor moves forward, it only moves forward and rotates very slowly until it engages in the starter ring gear. By that time, uh, this armature has moved forward. That little trigger there moves up, okay, and <clears throat> that brings on the full current. The full current flows down through this heavy copper plate here into the main winding, and the rotor rotates at a very high torque. So it's a bit of a cumbersome mechanism, but it actually works very well. They're very reliable. They were made by CAV. In, in England back in the heydays of, of Gardner and British industry. Okay, so we have this one wired up to a battery now, so I'm gonna use a very crude method of firing it. Okay, wait for it. You'll see here. You'll see, I'll do it again. The whole thing moves forward. Now that's fine. That's the way they addressed that problem back in the early days of this century, right up until until the modern times. Now, there is another starter. It's called the S130. And it's a much more simple starter. I haven't got an actual starter here to show you, so I've just got this picture. What happens here 
whenever you apply the main voltage here, uh, the whole rotor rotates, but it doesn't move out. This pinion here, simply by virtue of inertia, it simply flies out along this shaft here. This shaft, don't know if you can see this or not, but this shaft has a helical groove in it. So the pinion's sitting there quite stationary, doesn't really want to move. Whenever the current is applied, the rotor rotates very quickly, and because of its own inertia, it simply flies out along that helical, that helical uh, spline and engages in the starter ring gear, and away she goes. These are a most excellent starter. Um, between the conventional 5-inch and 6-inch, I would have a slight preference for the 6-inch. I think they just last longer and they're more torquey. But the, the, the 5 inch is fine as well. Now, um, the problem is that the, the recess into which the 6 inch starter fits, of course, the 5 inch won't fit there. But we have a little adapter which goes in and uh, allows this to, to, in fact, I can actually show it to you on this engine here. You'll see that, that little adapter goes in there and that allows the 5 inch starter to sit in there like that. Uh, what else have I got to show you? Okay, an extraordinary thing about the Gardner engine, perhaps this is true of all diesels, they're inclined to stop in the same place all the time. So the ring gear gets worn in the one place. I hope I can, well you can see it here, look. You can see all the wear in the ring gear, look, only takes place within, I don't know, 30 degrees, 20 degrees of rotation. So the ring gear gets all worn on the one side. Now, there's again two types of ring gear. This is a sweat on one. This one has to be brought up to cherry red hot and then it just drops onto the flywheel. Uh, more modern ones uh, bolt on. The advantage of the bolt on ones is you can simply unbolt them, turn them around, bolt them back on again and you'll get another 30 years out of them. You can't do that so handy with the sweat on ones. The sweat on ones, really, you have to break them uh, in order to take off the old one, and then you have to heat the new one to put it on. Although somebody has managed to get this one here off, I'm not too sure how they did that. Because uh, you usually need two acetylene torches uh, to have sufficient temperature to get them on. Okay, we'll just pop around now to another engine and show you how the starter is actually mounted. So we see here a starter actually mounted on an engine. All the gardeners that we deal with, all the traditional ones, all use this strap arrangement here. You'll see that it's anchored here on the crankcase. It comes up along here, and then you've got this <coughs> this tensioning pull bar here, uh, which which um, um, which really locks them in place. The <coughs> the distance from the end of the pinion to the start of the ring gear inside that I showed you has to be one eighth of an inch. Uh, no more, no less. That's why we use this spacer here just to hold the starter in the correct position. Here you can see the wiring that would come across from the wiring loom and normally they would go on there like that. Okay, so that there becomes live once you turn the key, energizes that and energizes the starter as I explained before. Okay, here you'll see uh, a wide variety of flywheels that are used on gardeners and their associated ring gear. You'll see here, look, this is the bolt-on ring gear that I mentioned. This is a particularly light uh, flywheel that comes on, came off a, a, a bus. Um, these would be heavy marine flywheels here. Uh, that's a flywheel that's used in conjunction with a torque converter. But you'll see they all have the starter ring gear on them. Some of them are bolt on, and as I explained, uh, some of them are, are sweat on. They're not bolted on. They have to be expanded. There's another, another couple of bolt on ones here. 